As um, the presenter said, I'm uh, Asker and I'm from uh, a Copenhagen-based geo company uh, called Septima. And I'm here to tell you, ooh, tell you about a system that we built for serving uh, oblique aerial imagery using stack and cloud-optimized geotips. Um, I split the presentation into four parts. Uh, first, an introduction to oblique aerials, then um, something about the, uh, the data that we built the system for and the existing system, which was proprietary, and then uh, the new system and its technologies, and um, at last, some perspectives. Um, what is an oblique aerial image? It's uh, maybe obviously an image from an airborne platform. It has an oblique camera axis, which is a little different from most other aerial images, which tend to have a vertical axis. Um, and it is a perspective image, so it's nothing like an ortho photo. Uh, it's, uh, it's more like an, an image taken with your iPhone or a Canon camera or something like that. That's, an, that's a very important property about, uh, about this uh, data. This is an example from the uh, collection that we're going to see later on. Um, and we see some of the properties of the, um, you see the cursor, okay, uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the image here. You can see uh, facades very clearly, which you can't on an uh, author photo. Uh, the resolution at the front of the, the image is uh, higher than in the back of the image. And it is a, um, a limited extent. It is an image. It's a photograph. It's not this uh, unlimited uh, thing you can get with an auto photo. So, um, just a small note about georeferencing a perspective image. It's uh, not georeferenced like an auto photo, where you can have the top left uh, uh, coordinate of the top left pixel and then the resolution, and you're basically there. This needs a slightly more complicated transformation to go from pixel coordinates to world coordinates and the other way around. Um, a good uh, mental model is the old shoebox camera that I tried to, uh, to model on the right. It's uh, basically a box with a hole uh, and an imaging plane in the old days. This was photographic paper. The cool kids today probably use CCDs. Um, and then you have objects in, uh, in, in space out in the world. And if you know the exact position of the camera, of the, of the center point here, its rotation, the, you could say the direction of the camera which it's pointing, and the, uh, the geometry of the camera, in the inside of the camera, the camera uh, you, can, you can calculate the straight line f uh, which the, the light will travel from the, the object to the center here, and it will continue straight on to the CCD, and it will give you, uh, if you have the X, Y, Z of the of the object in space, it will give you the exact pixel at which point the, uh, the, the, the object is uh, imaged. The other way around, if you, if you have a, a pixel, you, you put your mouse cursor somewhere in the image, you would like to, where, 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 what is this at my mouse pointer? You can go the other way around, but uh, you, only, you only get the ray, you, you don't know where at that ray the object is posi positioned. You have to intersect the ray with something else, possibly a terrain model, a 3D model, um, city model or uh, another ray from, from another uh, perspective image to, to get the X, Y, Z location of, um, of the object. So now that you are all experts in photogrammetry, let's go on to the data. Um, um, a little more than a year ago, the Danish Agency for Data Supply and Infrastructure, which is uh, called SDFI in Danish, um, approached us and asked us to, to build a new system for, for this uh, collection of, of data that they have. It's um, for, for Danish, um, in, Den in Denmark it's a relatively large collection uh, because it, it has um, uh, every location in Denmark imaged from at least once from each of five angles, north, south, east, west, and uh, top down uh, at a high resolution with these high quality cameras and every second year and uh, that uh, sums up to quite a lot of, of uh, Danish, uh, no, qu quite a lot of uh, data for, for Danish, uh, um, yeah, uh, compared to the size of our country. And the best part is that it's free and open, party smiley. Um, yeah. Um, so we're very happy about that, of course. It's a very valuable data set. I said they, had a, they have an existing system. When they bought the data in 2017, they needed a way to use this data. So they bought an, a, a proprietary system. And this is the web-based client for that system, which is pretty nice. Um, you see the, um, 
uh, some location imaged from the five different locations, and you see a green dot and a yellow dot, and those those are uh, positions that are uh, you you could put your mouse pointer at one image, and it'll then use this transformation I talked about before to go to a XYZ uh, world location and back up into the other images. Um, you can also do measurements using these um, these properties. Uh, measure distances on terrain or from terrain and up. Uh, and there are a lot of, lots of use cases. It's, it's actually pretty widely used in Denmark by, by people that are in no way connected to the geo industry. These are used by window cleaners to figure out how many windows do I need a ladder. It's used by uh, uh, fire brigade. It's used by solar uh, installers, uh, entrepreneurs for finding out where should I put the wires and so on. So we have a lot of users. But the existing system has an API, which is firstly proprietary, and it's extremely convoluted. It's almost impossible to use. And to top that, they have even obfuscated the data values. So, so you need to do a lot of work to get to these data. And it makes it very difficult to access for third parties if you don't use their uh, browser-based client. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a huge waste of potential, of course, for free and open data sets. That's, so, that's why they asked us to build something different. Then the image data, they, were, uh, they are available as deep zoom tile pyramids, um, um, but you need to know how to use the API to get there. Um, and raw image data zipped together in large blocks available via FTP. All in all, the system is pretty difficult to, to get to and the data are even, even uh, more difficult to get to. And then this system requires uh, quite a lot of in-house uh, processing to make, uh, ev every time they receive an image, they have to uh, process uh, um, deep zoom pyramids, uh, and they have to process these, uh, update these zip blocks and put new data in there. It's quite a lot of processing. And they have to store multiple copies of the data in zip files in deep zoom, deep zoom pyramids and the raw data for their own uh, processing needs. So that's also uh, costs. The new system, they wanted um, easy access to metadata and image data uh, for third-party applications, meaning developers, uh, mainly. Um, they uh, wanted to have uh, less data processing and fewer copies uh, of data, and preferably be standards-based, which is maybe an, uh, point number one uh, repeated. Same performance, and they wanted it to be open source. So. The new system that we reproposed, uh, based on Stack and Stack API, um, JPEG compressed uh, GOGs served from a standard HTTP server, and then a tile proxy for uh, old-fashioned JPEG tiles to to make it even easier to access uh, for third parties. And so, a little bit about the different uh, parts of that system. Um, why did we go with Stack? Um, the SDFI has, has always been a very OGC, but, but uh, even SDFI, they've tried to, to push OGC to, to work on a, a standard for perspe perspective imagery since they bought their first data set in 2017. And then nothing has really happened um, except that they have uh, circulated a, a report that we gave them uh, <laughs> as a draft uh, spec, uh, apparently. No, it's, it's been uh, perceived as a draft spec. That's an important uh, difference. Um, stack, uh, it uh, lacked a lot of the elements that we needed for perspective imagery. The rotations, the exact location of the camera center, uh, and the camera geometry, but stack is extendable, so we decided to go with stack and, uh, and develop an extension to, to uh, have these things be part of, uh, of the stack item. So, here, is an example at, at the right of, uh, of such a stack item using the extension. Um, it has the, the necessary metadata to, to do these exact calculations of uh, with photogram photogrammetric uh, um, calculations. Uh, most of the, the, um, uh, the properties at top here are, are from stack and the, the main um, extension that we heard about before today. Uh, and then the PERS, uh, a prefix here is, is uh, the new extension. It has the exact location of the camera center. It has the rotation matrix to avoid omega, kappa, and phi, which is always making trouble when you try to use it, the rotations that way, for, you, for those of you who maybe know about photogrammetry. 
uh, and then the, the interior orientation of, uh, of the camera, uh, focal length and so on. Um, but the extension tries to not be only for these uh, highly accurate uh, photogrammet photogrammetric solutions. It also tries to be uh, to make it uh, possible to, to use for uh, less, less images with less known uh, parameters, uh, like uh, a mapillary use case. You have you only you have a user who uses an iPhone, and uh, the thing you know is an approximate location, an approximate uh, azimuth, and maybe the camera model and make. That should also be possible with this extension. Um, so at the moment, the extension, to my knowledge, is used in two systems, uh, the SDFI system and a site called geovisio.fr. And I uh, took uh, an, uh, an item from Geovisio, and you see it here, and it, I think it shows the, uh, <laughs> the, the point about being um, possible to use it for, for something less uh, photogrammetric than our use case. They, they only have a manufacturer model and a focal length. And maybe if you know something, you can, you can extract something more from the, from the camera model. Um, it's, uh, it, the, the maturity of the extension is pr proposal, but, but being implemented in two systems, it may, it may go to pilot, but feedback is still very much needed and wanted. So please, please, Go there, and uh, and if you have any opinions, uh, ideas, and, or something, let's uh, let's talk about it. Um, the the link is at the end of the of the slideshow. Okay, but what do we get from from using Stack? Uh, yeah, we get a lot of. Uh, um, it's supported by a lot of clients out of the box. So um, this is QGIS showing footprints from uh, 2019 East pointing images. Um, just. Yeah, it's just working, which is which is nice. And uh, this is uh, Matthias' uh, stack browser. Same thing. You point it at the at the uh, API, and you have a, a an out of the box browse uh, capability of of, uh, of our index. Very nice. You can go into each item, and you can see the metadata related to uh, to uh, to each image. So, once you got the metadata from the stack API, uh, you you. Uh, your client could uh, go through, go to the HTTP uh, server and just fetch the, the part of the, the file that it needs, uh, the cloud optimized UTIF. So, um, a little word about the, the Cox. Um, it's nice because it, they have uh, built-in tile pyramids. Uh, it's structured so that the client only needs to read the part of the file. Uh, which is needed, and uh, that gives us fast and efficient access for clients who support uh, reading Cox uh, dynamically. Also, a, a Cox is, a, is an ordinary TIFF, so a window cleaner, he can download the file using that, that link, he can use, open it in the Windows Paint or whatever it's called, and uh, make marking, uh, markings on it. It'll work like any other TIFF, which is very nice. People that are geo-professional so can, can download it and use it in their TIFF supporting software. What's not so nice is that support for reading Cox is still limited, uh, and uh, it's uh, well non-existing outside the Geo Society. Um, and uh, support for our uh, kind of uh, Geo tips, which are non-Geo referenced, they have no CRS, they have no FN, affine transformation, so maybe they're not even Geo tips. It's even more limited. Some some uh, readers tend to to assume that there is uh, CRS and uh, and a transformation and then crash uh, on reading it. So that's why we built also the, the tile proxy, which uh, proxies um, tiles from from the Cox. Um, we built this small, uh, actually a very small uh, Python project, Cox Tiler. Uh, which uh, serves the internal tiles from, from uh, the cloud-optimized Jutif. So, um, they're not georeferenced, so it's, it's just pixel space, it's just a, a, a tiling scheme for a raster, and uh, they are tiled inside the cloud-optimized Jutif, they are JPEG compressed, so when a client asks for a certain tile, the, the, the proxy reads the bytes from the, the, the needed bytes from the, uh, from the TIFF, and then passes those bytes directly onto the client without uh, decoding and re-encoding it. So it's, it's pretty fast and pretty effective um, for most requests. Some requests require uh, decompression and, and uh, compression. And we built a couple of uh, protocols in there. Uh, 
DeepZoom to support the old, uh, old browser-based client, and uh, the ZXY uh, um, scheme uh, widely used. So this is uh, basically the new backend. It's uh, open source. It's standards-based. Uh, it allows easy access to uh, metadata and data. And uh, SDFI, they have no data processing. They can require this, their suppliers of data to deliver their data as cloud, geo, um, cloud optimized GeoTIF. So they'll just copy it right onto the, to the uh, disk drive, and then boom, it's, it's uh, online. And they only have one copy of data uh, lying around. They are pretty satisfied with that. So. Last, some perspectives of standardized access to aerials. I would really like uh, these uh, perspective images to be first-class data citizens. citizens. Uh, up until now, we tend to, we have, we, have, we have lots and lots of aerials out there, but they are, we, the, mm, we don't use them for, we tend to not use them for anything else than deriving other data from, topographic data, vector data, maybe author photos, and then they are put on the shelf and they stay there, even though they, they, that they, they have information that we can't get to in, in, uh, in other ways. So, um, I, would, I, would, I would like to see a, yeah, some way that we could uh, standardize uh, access to, to this uh, data type, so we can, we can combine it with other types of data. Uh, for instance, I have this uh, terrain model, I have this uh, bunch of uh, perspective images with known orientations. Please make me a, an author photo from this. Um, you could uh, do uh, on-the-fly 3D model generation. Um, consider being able to say to Open Drone Map, uh, here's, a, here's the Stack API with images, please make me a, a model of this area. And Open Drone Map knows how to download the stuff. It even has uh, very good a priori uh, orientations from the, from the data, so it should be uh, relatively fast to, to, uh, to calculate. Um, you could do 3D uh, texturing on the fly for city models. Uh, this example on the, on the right is a screen dump from a browser um, client built some uh, of our um, Danish uh, colleagues from uh, Alexandra Institute, and it it really it, it has a city model loaded, and then you point it to the old uh, system from for SDFI, and it, it uh, loads the images on the fly and the textures it on the on the city model. So you can you could you could switch between uh, 2017, 2019, 2021 data without uh, without any problems. Um, and of course, then projecting uh, vector data onto, uh, onto the perspective images. And I have a simple example of that uh, as the almost last slide. Um, this is a, pro a property, uh, it's a system for, for looking at properties. You have a property here on, a, on an ordinary map. Uh, and we could show an ordinary ortho photo over here with the, with the boundary overlaid, but you wouldn't get the same impression of the, of the property. The, its slope, you wouldn't get uh, an impression of the building materials used. You, you see a lot of other uh, stuff on this image compared to an ortho photo. So um, that's just to give some examples of, of what we could do if we had uh, uh, a common way of, of accessing uh, uh, aerials, not only oblique, but also vertical, of course. So, thank you. Um, please, uh, these are the links for the projects that I've mentioned. Um, I'm here to talk. Uh, I'd really like to talk to any of you if, well, about whatever. <laughs> um, and also there is a Birds of a Feather session about uh, Stack on Thursday, I think, in uh, room 4, 18, 15. I'll try to be there. So, um, yes, I hope to, to talk to some of you later in the conference. Thank you.